put this together. And uh, without further ado, we'll dive into our first talk with, uh, with Tom Dyson. <laughs> Great. Uh, so I'm uh, I'm Tom. I'm uh, I'm the co-founder and the technical director at Torchbox, with uh, the UK-based agency that, that started Wagtail, and I, I I run the the open source Wagtail project from from the UK. Um, Tim has slightly stolen my thunder by doing almost all the thanks, <laughs> but uh, there's one person he didn't thank, and um, uh, when we uh, we had the idea for this originally, an, another, a, another Wagtail space. Um, this is something organized by Four Digits, a great agency in Arnhem in the Netherlands. And that was in March, and we finished that and saying, it'd be really good to do something like this in, in the US. And, um, and Andy and Will were involved in that decision, and um, immediately I thought of Tim. And uh, it's really, you know, really thanks to Tim that uh, we've been able to put this together. I mean, with, with the generosity of Wharton, but Tim's organizational help and um, you know, I have to always always be careful about asking Tim to help because I know that he'll always say yes and just kind of keep <laughs> helping. And uh, so I want to make sure I never overstep them up. But thank you, Tim, for everything you've done. Okay, I um, uh, I'll, Tim's also talked a bit about the format. So today is all about the talks. The the rough format is 25 minutes, up to 25 minutes, and five minutes of questions. But I think we can be pretty flexible about the timings. Um, at the end of today, after the talks are finished, we want to plan the sprint. So those of you who are staying for Friday and Saturday, uh, I think it would be great for us to spend an hour looking at what, um, what themes and priorities we could all look at and, and, and maybe identify some teams. Uh, also tomorrow, there's a, there's a, a, a tutorial, um, a three-hour tutorial for those of you who would like it. Um, I'll be doing this, and it's... Uh, goes from scratch, so even if you've, you've never done any Python or Django before, the idea is that you should be able to start from scratch, and <clears throat> at the end of the three hours, you should be able to, you should have launched a site on Wagtail. Um, and so if you're interested in that, and I think I've heard a couple of people would like to do that, then please come and see me, and um, I'll make sure that we get set up ready for that tomorrow. Uh, hash Wagtail space is uh, the hashtag we're using if you're tweeting about this or doing anything on social media. We're also streaming. Um, we're using the Blue Gene system that's live right now. This is the short code that redirects to the streaming URL. Um, if you're, any of your colleagues want to want to want to join in, we would like to take photographs of people and uh, and also maybe do some short film interviews. Um, Will here is an amazing photographer and, and will take photos. If any of you would not like to have your photo taken, please let me know or Will. Know. Um, and finally, we just we want to make sure everyone here feels happy and relaxed and safe. And if you're at all worried about anything or anxious, um, please come and see me or one of the other organisers that were standing here, and, and we'll we'll help. Okay, so I'm gonna. I wanted to start this conference by giving a very general talk about where we've got to with Wagtail over the last four years, what's happening right now, and what we're planning next. So I start with a kind of a quick history lesson. This is uh, uh, an overhead view of uh, our offices. This is um, uh, the headquarters of Torchbox. We were based in something called uh, Cornbury Park, which is part of the Witchwood Forest. It's, uh, it's an ancient hunting forest designated in 10, 1085, I think. It's in the Doomsday Book, a royal hunting forest. It's an amazing environment. I mean, I guess I wanted to show you two things. One, they were pretty small. We're like that building there, a bit of that building. Um, but also that we're in this beautiful rural location. And one of the advantages of being in a beautiful rural location is that you have lots of animals around. And so we've got like swans and the deer and the deer park and stuff. But the, the one I really like, and I, I, I really know nothing about, uh, I'm, I'm no ornithologist, but the one I really like is, is this little creature, which from uh, spring to autumn, uh, fall, uh, uh, just kind of hangs around in the grass areas outside our offices. And uh, it's got this really cute movement of its tail. And, um, and it was uh, because of this bird that we decided to call our content management system Wagtail. This is a Wagtail. Uh, mm -hmm. And so uh, our logo, which you know, I, I like, everyone likes the logo, it's actually not a very accurate logo. It's got this little tail down here. The tail should be much bigger and sticks out the back and moves up and down. Anyway, that's a Wagtail. Apparently you don't, there, there are no, Daniela has a, a friend, an expert friend, who says there are no Wagtails in the States, so I'm sorry about that. Um, so we, uh, I can play this video, 
we, in 2014, we launched Wagtail. Um, we built it for the Royal College of Arts, which is one of the um, preeminent art institutions in the UK. Uh, I'm trying to turn the volume down. But um, they, uh, they had done a large um, evaluation of, on, of content management systems, and they decided that they wanted something slightly different. They commissioned us to build it, and they were keen for us to open source it. This is uh, a film from the, the launch party of that. Um, we, we had been, Torchbox has been going since 2000. Uh, we have built a lot of uh, large content managed public websites. We've used many content management systems. In particular, we've used a lot of Drupal, uh, which is very big in our space, which is, uh, we're focused on the nonprofit, um, public sector, education, generally people making the world a better place. And Drupal's been really big in that space. And uh, we've built lots of sites on Drupal that we we're really proud of, but we, we were very frustrated with it from a technical point of view. So, so Wagtail was born really out of those frustrations, but also as this commission from, from the Royal College of Art. Um, the, the next year, 2015, we had our first sprint. Uh, this is in uh, the office of Craig Helps, an amazing organization in South Africa. So this is uh, outside their Cape Town offices. It's a bit dark here, but uh, you can see Lisa here and Cody, who are now two of the, the core developers. They are, um, we were hoping they were going to be able to come, and they, they had some visa issues, but they're going to be presenting some of what they're using Whitehall for remotely uh, later on this morning. In 2016, we had a call from this very secretive organization in Brooklyn, um, and uh, they wanted us to build something. They, they said we were using it for this, this, this campaign. They couldn't tell us any of the details. And uh, they, needed a, they needed an API, because they wanted to send out information, not just for the website, but to these very kind of highly segmented uh, uh, phone-based, SMS-based campaigns. And uh, it turned out that this was the Hillary Clinton campaign. So HillaryClinton.com ran on Wagtail. They commissioned the first API, uh, which is you know which is then open sourced. We were really excited about the day. We, also, we weren't allowed to tell anyone. We were really excited about the day when we were going to say our technology ushered in the president, and uh, it just just didn't work out quite that way. Um, next year, 2017. Um, I'm just kind of picking some highlights from from the years. This has been a really big deal for us. So uh, the NHS, the UK's National Health Service adopted Wagtail, and not just for, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a huge organization with lots of different, lots of different parts, but uh, not just for, for one department, but for their main site, nhs.uk, which is one of the, the highest profile sites in the UK, 90 million visitors a month. Uh, you know, it's, it's the site that, uh, and that uh, my colleagues and I would go for if we kind of see some rash on our arm or something, and we're worried, we're worried what, what the problem is. So, is it, uh, and this, this is a big deal. So the NHS, I guess it doesn't have quite the same resonance here as it would in the UK, but the NHS is currently the fifth largest employer in the world. It used to be the second largest. It's now the fifth. Any, any ideas what the other four might be? Red Guesses? Chinese Red Army. Chinese Red Army, very good. Yeah, the number two. Trump Associates. <laughs> <laughs> there are the others. So, uh, yeah, McDonald's, Walmart, People's Liberation Army, and uh, the US Department of Defense. Um, so, this is a big deal. This is. Um, this is a big deal, I think, not just for Wagdale, but for Django and Python. This is, you know, Django running the main site of the world's fifth largest organization. But obviously, a pretty big deal for us as well. And um, I guess this, this marked a turning point for us from a commercial point of view as Torchbox because we're still working with clients who uh, uh, you know, in the sectors that I described. And, um, and up to last year, a lot of them were still nervous about because, you know, they could see the benefits of Wagtail, but it's still it's not something that, that they've heard of in the same way they've heard of with Drupal and WordPress, but NHS has, has, has changed that. Um, another thing last year happened is that, uh, that Google have started getting serious about Wagtail, so Google are running several of their large sites on Wagtail, blog.google, uh, DoubleClick. Um, they are uh, starting to invest in Wagtail as well from the code point of view, so at the last sprint, um, uh, Kevin Chung came and uh, made a great commit that was, that's been released in, in 2.1. This is another thing that's changed for all of us, not, not, not just for Wagtail. So when we launched Wagtail um, in 2014, this is the uh, Python line, which is just underneath PHP and popularity, and then second up from here. And, uh, and now we're here. And this is kind of like just a luck thing, really, that uh, we all picked the language that has exploded. So this is, uh, this is where, you know, this is Python now, and this is where Python's predicted to be here. And, um, you know, we picked Django and Python because because we love working with it, but uh, 
the explosion of interest, I think, has really come around machine learning and big data and uh, computer science curriculums um, with universities around the world where Python is you know, increasingly the most popular language. Python has been is, is a very important kind of glue language now for, the, for all the big machine learning and big data toolkits. So that's, that's fantastic for us, and it's, I think it's a, a big opportunity for Wagtail. And then I think this is my final one on the kind of recent history, Wagtail 2.0. This is a big release for us in February. Uh, I hope many of you have had the chance to upgrade for this. I guess the, one of the dramatic things about it is that, it, uh, like Django 2.0, and that's why we named it, we did a kind of step upgrade to, to, to launch in the same time with Django 2.0. It's, it's Python 3 only, so we wanted to kind of to make that commitment. It has the new draft tail editor, which is a massive improvement on what was there before, and, and many other things too. So here we are. This is, this is where we're at, Wagtail, today. It's one of the top 10 open source content management systems. It's used by enormous public sector organizations. So just in this country, Peace Corps, CFPB, NASA, tech giants, Google, Salesforce, Twilio, Mozilla, and then you know people who are like more in our space, like Oxfam, uh, Amnesty. And, and you know appropriately, given its start with the Royal College of Art, Wagtail's really big in, in the higher education sector. So, Wharton, our wonderful host, MIT, California College of the Arts, Chicago, Columbia, Rice, Caltech, you know, there's, there's, there's a big list. Caltech were hoping to be here. They, they are now, they've been doing this, they were quite early adopters, and they're, uh, they've got this problem that, that many, I think probably all universities have, where departments start spinning up little subsites, or, you know, a professor's got a group and uh, doesn't want to use the main Drupal site, or so they kind of spin something up on Wagtail or Squarespace, and then you end up having 300 sites. So they've built something on Wagtail that means that, uh, Everyone can spin up a site on this central, um, central platform, and they are now moving their main www Caltech site across to Wagtail. So that's where we are to now. And, 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 and then what's next? So this is a now a busy project, and uh, we have 104 pull requests, which you know I feel a bit nervous about. And we, it's nice to be just two figures, but uh, uh, 104 is a lot. But it's not just the pull requests; it's the messages on Slack, the questions on Stack Overflow, the things people ask me in the corridor. You know, people are full of ideas of improvements, which is amazing. You know, we should be, we should have better docs. We should do inline reviews. A way that recently I've thought about trying to, um, trying to kind of organise and prioritise this is, is by uh, clustering these into three groups. So these these are the groups that I've I've been trying to think of, and and I'm, I kind of like to encourage you to, to think about these clusters too. And it might be a helpful way for us to think about the work that we can do together as a community. So quality features and community. Let's think about some uh, examples of those. So I'm, I'm not going to kind of do a, a, a comprehensive list, but these are some of the priorities, I think. So under the quality heading comes things like accessibility. So we tried to do accessibility right from, from, from the beginning with Wagtail, but I know that there's, there's, we, can, we can improve on this. We've had some really interesting feedback recently from a blind user in Sudan who has given us some fantastic information on ways that we can improve, like the ways we can change our font icons, for example. There's definitely more that we can do here. Performance, so this is, you know, we've always wanted Wagtail to feel fast. We've wanted to, I mean, and this is, again, this is kind of in, in, in a reaction to the other systems that we've used. We want it to be under 250 milliseconds for, for page load, so it feels like a seamless experience. But performance is, you know, it's about minimizing queries and so on. It's also about thinking about front-end performance. And this is in the UI, making it feel smooth and liquid, but also meaning that you can serve on, in the front end. So generally, you are able to run a pretty big site on a $5 DigitalOcean box if you, you know, if you need to. I want to kind of keep chipping away at that. The Streamfield UI, uh, many of you will be familiar with Streamfield. When we built Streamfield, the idea was that it would be, uh, it would help build these kind of long form narrative style pages, the ones that are, uh, you know, you've seen great examples in the New York Times and Guardian and BBC and, uh, and and it works really well for that. But actually, what surprised us is that people use Streamfield for, for modeling quite um, kind of hierarchical data, so nested data. And Wagtail, it works, but the UI isn't great for that. So there's a big project happening right now. This is uh, amazing contributor Bertrand Bordage from uh, from northern France, who's got some a Kickstarter to, to to redo this, and that's underway now. And then the run, front front end refactor. This is not my area of, ex of expertise, but I know that the things we did four years ago. Are, are no longer the best practice. You know, it's, there, there are better ways that we can do, we can, we can manage our CSS and JavaScript. So that's the quality. The next one is features. This is, the, this is the cool bit. I mean, this is the stuff that uh, people, you know, get most excited about because we all want new stuff. But I think it's, it's important to think about the quality too because otherwise 
it, you know, it's, it's easy to kind of get enthusiasm and build features, but we have to keep making sure that the quality, the performance, the accessibility is good. Nevertheless, let's talk about the quality. So let's talk about features. So, so headless, I think this is, this, is, this is another thing that wasn't really around four years ago. People familiar with this concept? Though uh, this is kind of decoupling your, your content management system from the presentation. It's a bit, what, a bit like what the Hillary Clinton campaign did. But they were using Wagtail as a kind of content store and then using the API to push it out to different media. And this is, this is definitely a more and more popular model. So people are building front ends in React or Vue, uh, or you know, these other amazing JavaScript toolkits. And actually, Wagtail does this pretty well, but we're not, we're not marketing this very well. There's not good documentation, and people are having to learn how to do it each, each time. I'm really looking forward to Michael's talk later, where he's going to explain about how he's built a big headless, a big CMS in, in the headless mode on, on Wagtail. <laughs> Uh, CX, this is a bit of sort of industry jargon, some of you may not be familiar with, this sounds like a uh, customer experience. So this is like moving away from the model, the kind of the traditional model of um, uh, one piece of content and you publish it out to everyone. And it's more like, um, you know, Jeff Bezos uh, said, I don't want one website, I want 50 million websites or something, I can't remember what the names are. You know, it's just like thinking about what the, the precise user experiences are for each of your users and making customizing content and, and journeys around, around what they need. And that usually means two things, personalization and A-B testing. And these are two things which are, uh, uh, which there, there is quite a good story for this in Wagtail. There are two good modules, one for testing, one for personalization, that are being used in some, in some high profile places. But we need to improve them and bring them in and market them and document them and so on. Machine learning, this is an area that, uh, you know, doesn't feel like maybe the most natural fit for a content management system. But I think there are a lot of ways, and particularly because we're on Python, we've got access to all these amazing libraries and services, that there are ways that we can start augmenting the system for, uh, for, for, for editors particularly that take advantage of some of these services. So here's, here's an example, this is one of my favorite examples. Um, this is actually built by uh, a Swedish a guy from a Swedish agency called Freud. So it all happens quite fast, but um, here's some pictures on my desktop. Four, uh, eight pictures, I'm gonna drag them into Wagtail, you'll be familiar with that user interface. Close it, so then my next job would be to title them, but I don't need, don't need to title them. Pops up here, sit next, sit next to a glass of wine, they've got tags, they've got titles. The herd of cattle, a black and that's my dog, Moscow, uh, he's not brown, but anyway, it's quite close. It's Nigel Farage, <laughs> all the time. A view of a tall building, you might recognize that building. Um, a white plate covered in the snow, that's actually some sardine heads in my case. So that, that wasn't so good. But um, that's because this is using the, uh, there are a few of these vision, you know, machine vision services. And this is the Azure one, which is actually, uh, it was the best, it's the best one for doing titles and clearly, you know, they rely on big data sets, and Azure probably doesn't yet have an image of sardine heads in a white sink, so that's why, you know, it had to guess a bit on that one. But uh, for the other ones, it's pretty good, and you can see that, you know, this is not perfect, but it's going to get better. These services cost, you know, one cent for a thousand requests, and it means that if you've got a lot of images, if you're running, you know, a big news site, and you want to make sure you've got good alt tags and, uh, and you can reference it, then we can use these services to help. You can hook into them, and, and it, it's easy. So I think there are a few other ways. There's some other ways, actually some more practical ways perhaps, but just, just a bit less cool to show off, that use uh, more natural language processing. So this is something we're doing for the California College of Art. They've got a lot of content, but they want to do, um, they wanted to do kind of thematic mapping. So uh, if you're an editor on a site that's got 100 pages, it might be quite easy for you to say, I know that this new, this new article is related to this article that was written two months ago. But if you've got 10,000 or 10 million pages, you, it's going to be harder for you. So you can use natural language techniques that do, for example, entity extraction, work out what the kind of the themes and the proper nouns are, and, and, and do similarity matching around that. So I'm, in, I'm really interested in this kind of uh, machine learning stuff. Review workflow, this is another one. This is something I, this has all happened quite quickly. I talked about this at the last Wagtail space. So at the, NH, with the NHS site, a lot of their content is medical, like I was saying. It was, uh, and it's really important that, you know, if, I, if I'm worried about something and I go to the NHS site, it's going to give me some diagnostic information. I mean, if it's serious, then it's going to tell me to go see a doctor, but it's going to give me some clues. And it's, it's just important that that's right, so I don't, you know, take, you know, take, take the wrong actions. So all this content has to be reviewed by, by clinic, clinicians. It has to be checked. At the moment, the way that happens is an editor writes it in, and then every six months they'll kind of do a screenshot, print it out, email it to someone. The doctor will see it. They'll print it out. They might, like, write on it. They might take a photo of it with their phones, email, you know, this, this kind of workflow is painful. And, uh, but it's, it's how the world works, you know, people emailing around PDFs and Word documents. And I think there are better ways of doing this. This isn't specific to Wagtail, this is just like, this is the way that content gets managed. So we built something in a, so sorry, I'm annoying that, like, 
if you use a GIF, then uh, it sort of starts halfway. Um, so we're going to have to wait for the, we, you're basically now going to see the punchline before we start the joke. Um, so you can just sort of ignore this bit a bit. But this is a, a proof of concept that we built in a sprint for the NHS in the UK. That is it just an idea about how we can try and circumvent that, this really painful review process? Uh, in a minute, I was going to start from the beginning. And uh, you can forget what you've seen already. All right, here we go. So here's the demo site. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a clinician. I'm looking at this. I'm thinking that's the wrong date. So I can, you know, instead of like being printed out, I'm, I'm doing the Google Doc style, where you know you, you can comment directly on, on the comment page. We can see now that that has a comment attached to it. And then I'm going to annotate this this line here. This is using a third-party uh, annotation JavaScript library. And when I'm saving this, it's being pushed back uh, through an API into uh, Wagtail. We decided to use a kind of GitHub-style overall review method. Uh, interface like this. So you can either say I'm just commenting in it, or I'm going to approve it, or I'm going to reject it. Um, obviously this isn't perfect, right? This is a three hour proof of concept, but it is all hooked up together. And then when I log in the back end, I can see what the comments are. And we can definitely do better with this, but I think this is this is an area I'm really interested in because it kind of, it solves a real world problem. Another feature I'm interested in better first class integrations with other systems. So a lot of people are doing this already. They're building, building tools based on uh, uh, things like, like Twilio for, for messaging and um, Salesforce is another one. So uh, a lot of our clients use Salesforce for, for CRMs. Uh, so we've built a few C C Salesforce CRM integrations. I know that Salesforce themselves use Wagtail. So they're using it for their documentation and their, uh, uh, their status site. I want to get in touch with this Salesforce and think about, you know, is, let's make Wagtail the, 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 the CMS that integrates best with, with Salesforce. And then my final, my final block was community. And um, again, this is one that I think in open source projects it's quite hard, it's quite easy to, to let this stuff slide or to think that you know it just kind of takes care of itself. But I, I think it, it doesn't. It's really it's, it's important to stay on top of this. I want us to be uh, remorselessly chipping away at the barriers to entry to, to new developers. So at the moment, you know, if you've got a Python version, if you know how to run Python on your on your laptop, you can probably get something set up, basic set things set up in five minutes. But then getting it hosted is harder. Daniela is, is going to demo, demo something later, which really makes a massive improvement to that people, to, 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 to that use case. But I want to make it, you know, five minutes set up for someone who doesn't have a Python virtual environment, or thirty seconds for someone who does. I'm going to kind of keep chip, chipping away at that because I, I think you know the difference between five minutes and one minute, or thirty minutes and five minutes, is really important. I think for a lot of people like me, the way that you discover technologies is in a sort of Half hour lunch break when you see something that you're interested in and you try it and you want to get you you know you want to get through that that process and, and feel like this is something you're interested in and works. Documentation, you know, this is a, this is always an issue for, for for open source projects. I think people feel like unless they're a, a, you know a really top developer, it's hard to contribute. But all open source projects want people to help them with the documentation. Our documentation is okay. It all makes sense. It's all accurate. But I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's organized in the most thoughtful way. Again, Daniela's got some really interesting thoughts and, 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 and the right way to do technical documentation, which I'd like us to think about. Hopefully many of you are familiar with Django Girls. This is a, a fantastic tutorial and uh, it's so well thought out. And, and in fact, they, they've really thought about this, this top problem. They really make it easy using this tutorial to think about people who, who, aren't, who haven't got any experience of this and how they can get into it. And uh, you know, a, a, apart from being an amazing initiative, an amazingly successful initiative, it's also the best Django tutorial, so it's what I point anyone who wants it and who's interested in learning Django. And they have this concept of extension, so we, we want to write a Django Girls, an extension to the tutorial about Wagtail. So once you've completed it, you can go off in different directions, and one of them could be the, the Wagtail version. We need people to, we have, we respond on Stack Overflow and Slack. At the moment, that's handled, you know, there's a small group of people who do that, but I want to make that really good. I want to make, like, 50 people who can answer questions on this, and for it to feel like the most welcoming, the, the most, the fastest response, the most friendly community. And I want to have more sprints like this. I think, uh, um, you know, getting people together in real life is undervalued. Uh, and uh, we've had now many of these, many of these sprints. Um, I think this is maybe the seventh or eighth. Of Cape Town, Reykjavik, two in the Netherlands, three in the Netherlands, two our offices in the UK. Um, and I think. Uh, it, it, whenever we have one of these events, we always notice afterwards the sort of the surge in enthusiasm and the new people that, that come in. And I think it's, it's a really great way of pushing the community forward. Okay, um, this is my last slide. Here, what's the three-year plan? So we're always encouraged to think about, you know, can't, uh, what's the phrase? You know, 
you're not going to get anywhere unless you, I can't remember, some sort of business plan. Anyway, we ought to have a three-year plan. And uh, here's some thoughts I had about, about, about what Wagtail could be in three years' time. And the first is, I think, at the moment, Wagtail's, you know, it's, if you're a Django developer, you've probably heard of it, and it's probably a good option for you, or if you're a Python developer. But um, I think I would like Wagtail to be, you know, people think, I want to use, let's use Wagtail, even if they're not, you know, whatever, whatever technology they're interested in. It, sh it should be a, a, a content management system that's kind of a top choice, no matter what your technical background. The second one, I mean, I'm not quite sure about how to phrase this, but uh, we are clearly, Wagtail is much bigger than Torchbox now. So, um, you know, we're just 65 people, and, uh, and you know, a small proportion of that are working on Wagtail. We are investing in it a lot, but it's uh, it's much bigger than us now. We have people from four continents in the, in the, in the core team. Um, but we still, I think, investing the most, and we still, and I, I think it would be, I think a, a good goal for it would be that Wagtail was not at all reliant on, on, on Torchbox in three years' time. Which is not to say, you know, we want to be at the heart of it, but I think it would be good if we didn't have to be. And then, this, this is an also a tricky one to talk about because, you know, people don't really like talking about money with these kind of big altruistic open source projects, but I think it would be healthy for Wagtail to have an, a commercial ecosystem around it, for, uh, for there to be more and more agencies that are specialising in Wagtail and, um, and, you know, making money out of Wagtail and paying developers to, to work on it. And uh, I think it would be good maybe to, for there to be some commercial plugins so people make tools that that uh, that do specific things that may not be free, and you know, not everyone will use them. But I think that that's also an indication of, of, of a healthy a healthy project. And the ways that we will get there, I think, will be by being following this idea of being principled but adaptive. So principled, I mean, we've always we've had some kind of some quite clear principles and philosophies about Wagtail about about being a tool that uh, that doesn't have opinions, for example, about, the, about, about front-end markup, that lets you build the site you want, that encourages you to do the right thing. But also we have to be adaptive because, you know, in three years' time, the, the, the situation will be different. Just as in four years ago, we weren't really thinking about sites that had React front-ends. In three years' time, there's going to be other changes that we, we haven't predicted yet. We need, to, we need to be able to adapt and change to that, otherwise we will become irrelevant and there'll be something else. And I think the way we can also do that is by, by continuing and improving the way that we are friendly and supportive and, uh, and, uh, and inclusive. And, uh, and, and, and so far, that's, that's the experience I've had from, from everyone. I mean, in Django generally, to be honest, but, uh, and Python, but, but also here. And I, I really want to do that. But as well as being friendly and supportive, I also think it's really important that we crush the opposition. <laughs> uh, that's it. Thank you all very much.